Good evening, everybody, and welcome to the second half of our South Florida Tribune Broadcasting Doubleheader. And we have Fire Up. Before I get to Fire Up, I want to dedicate this show to my late mother, Shyla Morganroth, who would have turned 82 today. Mom, I love you very much. I miss you very much, but I certainly learned a whole lot with you. Hope you're resting in peace with the rest of our family members up there at Clover Hill Park Cemetery, the Birmingham version of at Birmingham, Michigan, that is. Okay. So with that said, let me go ahead and introduce our crew. But we're going to go backwards. We're going to bring on Damon Knight, who used to be a part of the program. He's a writer for us here at the South Florida Tribune, and he will come on every once in a while and be able to talk about what he writes. Okay, Damon, welcome back. Thank you. I appreciate it. Stay. All right. And well, and Ralph Williams, who I'll be partnering up with tomorrow on the External Bum podcast. Welcome back, what Ralph. Oh, thank you, Scott. Thanks for having me. It's good to be back. Okay, great to have you. All right, George. Thank you. This is round two for both of us. Round two. Good to be here with all you guys. We're going to have a great show tonight. I know we are. Oh, yeah. And last but not least, Jeremy Balrick, the master of the one-liners, and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Welcome back, JB. Welcome. Glad to be here. That's Hurry a up sign of respect. I love that. Do that again. But no, I don't lose a hat, by the way. There we go. That's what we got. The guys are wearing the company cap for gosh. Shit. And I am your host, Scott Morgan Roth. I want to let everybody know that Fire Up is being broadcast around the world. Am I loud enough? Doesn't matter. And the audio version of Fire Up can be heard around head be can be heard on iHeartRadio, Apple, Spotify, Google, or wherever you get your podcast. Please hit the red subscribe button and YouTube South Florida Tribune. We're striving for more subscribers. Please also comment, like, and share the broadcast. Okay, want to be a guest? No problem. Participate in the chat room. One way to do it, or send your topic ideas to South Florida Tribune at gmail.com. If you want to advertise cost efficiently, give me a call 954 304 4941. We broadcast live on Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, and YouTube. Our website's www.southfloridatribune.com, Twitter slash X at Tribune South. Candy Ebling is behind the scenes. And that book that you see right near George Drycorn is my new book that's out called Lessons from the Microphone, Tuning into the Enduring Wisdom of Visionary Leaders. And to give you the Cliff Notes version of it, it's old school media versus new school media. Uh, we can go from there. All right, we have four good, strong topics. I expect all of our panelists to be every bit as good as the topics. So we're going to start it with Jeremy, Okay. Which losing streak will end first? San Antonio's first 15 gamer under Greg Popovich or the Detroit Pistons 18 under Monty Williams? Bear in mind, the Pistons streak is 18 straight. Detroit is 2 and 19, and the Spurs are 3 and 17. Great way to start the show on something like that, but it is what it is. I don't care which one ends first. I just don't want to be the team that does it because they'll go down in infamy. That's a good point. That's a really good point. All right. You, you better quit while you're ahead because you did follow the brand. Keep it simple, stupid. You did exactly that. All right, George. Well, it's an embarrassing situation right now here in the Motor City. Obviously, the Pistons are just uh, just dis, dis, disorganized. Let's put it that way. So it's a lot of angst around here right now. It's a really sad, sad story. And I'll say that the San Antonio Spurs do beat the Pistons to the victory column. I'll go with San Antonio, Scott. All right, Damon. Uh, I got to go with George. Uh, San Antonio, especially Greg Popovich, easily one of the best coaches in the league. Uh, he'll get his guys right. And, you know, Wemben Yama is a hell of a player. Uh, so I expect him to turn around real quick. Well, I, say San, I say San Antonio also. I agree with the panel. Yeah, well, I guess that makes it a complete majority. I'll go with San yes. Antonio. Monty Williams just doesn't have that good of a team. And to be honest with you, Troy Weaver isn't doing him any favors. When you compare Troy Weaver, you put him in the Matt Millen conversation. And if Tom <laughs> Gores has any sense at all, you go out there and get rid of him soon because he's going to run your franchise right to the ground. So next topic we're going to talk about tonight is Thursday night football matchup between the New England Patriots at 2-10 and 10 against the eight. And second in the AFC East, the Steelers are seven and five second in the AFC North. I don't think it's what any of us expected but when you talk about Mike Tomlin and Bill Belichick meeting to look alike in this time, at this time of the year. I really don't. So, Jeremy, go ahead. Wow, you want to talk about another snooze fest for Jeff Bezos and Amazon. Yeah, right. Wow. I mean, he's playing when you take the, how much he paid for the 10 years worth of airing on Thursday night, oh, it's yeah. 78 million a game. And so far, he's had about 80% games that aren't worth about dog water. And I mean, after the dog <laughs> drank <laughs> out of it. Right. So I don't know how he's not on suicide watch at this point. 
Well, you want to give me a score? I don't care if you give me that. Uh, score, it's a race to 10. Whoever gets their first wins because New England is the first team to only give up 10 points to three straight teams and lose. Okay. Do you have a current score now? No. 21, I, 21 to three, Patriots. Yep. Wow. Really? Yeah, yeah, they're winning. 21 Mike Tomlin might Patriots? be fired in the morning. Yep. <laughs> All right, well, George, continue. Well, uh, they- yeah, I mean, look, it's an embarrassment, guys. It really is. I mean, we're talking about two of the best coaches in the last couple of decades in the NFL, two of the best, and now they've fallen on hard times, especially Belichick. I mean, he's got to get out of that situation and either retire or move on to another team. Tomlinson, again, I mean, it's just a situation where, you know, Jeremy, you got it, man. These, these Thursday night games have just been dogs. For the most part, um, you know, but the situation is not good in, in neither one of those cities, although the Steelers still have a good shot at making a wild card if they can somehow pull it out. So, but that being said, yeah, both of these coaches, I would like to see them move on to other opportunities. Okay, yeah, so, uh, hold on. Can I get that up, score update again? What was that? 21 New England. To 3. Yeah, New twenty-one leading, three, New England. right? Ralph, right, yep. we go in a certain order. Damon's next. I'm sorry. Man. All right, Damon, go ahead. Yeah, I I have to agree with like the coaching changes. Uh, I think Tomlin can find a better situation, and so can Belichick. Uh, as far as tonight's winner, uh, I got to go with New England, um, especially because you know Belichick will do Belichick will do whatever it takes to to win. <clears throat> uh, Pittsburgh's in a tight spot with the uh, injury of uh, Kenny Pickett, uh, so. Yeah, that, that those are my thoughts. Okay, Ralph, you go ahead. Yeah, it's I, I agree with George. I think it's time for Mike Tomlin uh, to uh, to do something else or move on or whatever. Uh, he only has one year left on his contract, uh, which is next year. They have not, and I repeat, have not given him an extension. And usually by now they give him an extension. So I'm just wondering if whether or not that could be the case. I know he was on a podcast recently. And uh, Mike Tomlin, and he had mentioned something about that this contract might be his last. So I'm just wondering if that could be the case. Yeah, it wouldn't surprise me, obviously. No. They've had problems all year with the offensive coordinator. Matt Canada was let go. I know they, what did they win? I think a week ago or so. So, but, you know, I, I think this whole year, certainly, I guess he's never had a losing season, but again, you can't toil around mediocrity. Now, Ralph, I will say this. Should Tomlin leave, you know what? Teams will be standing at their front door letting coaches go if they bring him on. They really will. He will not be unemployed very long. No, he won't. I mean, that's if he chooses to do that, uh, Scott, because, in case, you know, uh, there are a lot of not, uh, really good broadcasting jobs out here that don't require all the stress. So I'm just wondering if maybe he takes a broadcasting job like Bill Carr did. Well, you know what? That's a very good point too, Ralph. Yeah. I mean, you know what? The guy's won a Super Bowl. He's done a lot. You might be a time where some of these guys in their 40s and 50s get out early. I think one of the ones that we can all recall is John Madden left early, right, many years ago. Right. Yeah. And he never looked back. So, And I'm sure there's other ones that we can talk about that left early that didn't want to go through the stress. But I think John Madden is the one that truly stands out. No, I, I think that that's a very good point, Ralph. It really, really, really is. And maybe you. Tomlin doesn't mind going out there and take a broadcasting job. Obviously, we'll address it later on as the year goes, but that's a really good point. All right, third topic I want to get to is one I really like. It, I think I like them all, but this one's really even better. Is Bryce Harper is seeking a new lifetime contract with the Philadelphia Phillies, as agent Scott Boris says. All right, what do you think, Jeremy? These lifetime co- yeah, he's, these I think lifetime, he's I think he's signed through 2031 anyways. Uh, these lifetime contracts are team killers in the long run. Uh, you could look and you can say how great it was to have Cabrera those first seven years, but the last three, it, it, it's been hard to watch at times because you can see that he's struggling to stay in game shape. Um, I just don't know if I would do that with somebody at his age. He's already at the back end of his prime. Right. Yeah, the thing is, you you do make a good point, Jeremy. Miguel Cabrera, Mike Gillich is a very loyal guy. He really is and wasn't didn't mind doing it. And Miguel Cabrera was hampered by injuries on the back end. 
but he's an, I know he's going in as a tiger. He didn't stay with the Marlins long enough, but you're right. Those back end contracts, if you extend them out long, but if there's one guy who I really admit, Jeremy, that does deserve it. I love Bryce Harper. I really do. This guy could play in any era. He ran into walls. He gave everything he had. And he seems to love the city of Philadelphia. So they've adopted him like a cult hero. So I, I personally like I hope he does get a lifetime contract with the Phillies. It was a great place. He's found a new home. But but you certainly have a valid point. All right, we'll take it over and to George. Don't, don't forget, he has already had one season that he missed due to injury that happened right after the season started, too. So he's already had one of those type of years. Well, like that's Cabrera just had. that's yeah. Just but Jeremy, let, 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 I'm sorry, George. The one thing uh -huh. I noticed though during the playoffs is the Phillies have been using him more at first base. So I think if you keep him at first base, the chances of him being able to play longer because he's his own worst enemy in the ballpark. He really is running into walls. If you keep him at first base, you have a puncher's chance that you can get your value out of him. All right, George, pick it up from there. Well, no, I mean, you guys are spot on. I mean, the, the situation and the comparison to Miguel Cabrera is very valid. Uh, but Bryce Harper is definitely, I mean, he he should finish his career in Philadelphia as a Philly. No question about it. He is uh, like the heart and soul of that team. He's done a tremendous job for them and in the community as well. Um, these long-term deals are very, very risky uh, for owners and general managers to give out. But Let's face it, there, it, it we, there, nothing really can be done to change that right now because if they want to do it, they have the money to do it. They have the length of, length of the contracts that work out that right. Scott Boros is a very tough negotiator, and I know he's going to try his best to get that for Bryce Harper. I do agree, though, he is a fire plug. He, he's fire firecracker, whatever. He's done a great job in Philly when he's healthy. And uh, if anybody deserved it, it, it's him. But I'm, I, again, I'm like Jeremy. I'm not a big fan of the long-term deals. Yeah, no, if I had to build a franchise around anybody, I would build around Bryce Harper all day long. I don't care. I mean, he started with the Nationals, did a good job with them, went over to Philadelphia. They seem to love this guy. So, all right, Damon. Yeah, uh, Bryce Harper, like, when you think playoffs, uh, he is one guy that stands out for sure. He brings clutch bats time and time again. Uh, Long-term contracts are risky. You know, you're you're in a potential situation where you could handicap a team for a very long time, and that's not something I think the Phillies want to do. But if it does work out, he's worth every penny. Okay, Ralph? Let me say this. Bobby Bonilla. Okay, remember when he signed that contract with the Mets and the Mets are still eating it? Okay. Uh, you know, Bryce Harper signing that kind of a deal. Uh, you know, if he retires, he'll make Philly eat it. And then Philly doesn't have any, you know, additional money to go out and get some other players. Don't forget about the Dodgers, too. You know, every year the Dodgers, they, they bring all these high-priced players in, and they all get hurt around the playoff time, and then they end up laying an egg. So, you know, they, they are risky. It's a risky uh, proposition here with this. Okay. All right, we got we have a – couple of games I want to get to before we end the broadcast. First of all, we're going to go around the horn to Jeremy. We've got the Buffalo Bills with the Kansas City Chiefs. Give me why you're going to pick who and give me a reason. Well, I think I'm going to pick the Chiefs because unlike Josh Allen, Pat Mahomes does not throw a lot of interceptions. Okay. Okay. All right. Second game, Philadelphia Eagles at Dallas Cowboys. You know, uh, first time the Eagles got them. Dallas looks like they're rebounding, but have yet to play a team that has like a major winning record and win. And Philadelphia is a team that has a major winning record. I think Philadelphia will still end up pulling this out in Jerry's world. Well done, Jeremy. Okay, George. Uh, I can't go against Patrick Mahomes and the, and the Chiefs, although the Detroit Lions beat him at home, as we know in the first Thursday of the season. Uh, but uh, I don't see uh, uh, Allen going in there and uh, springing a, a victory for Buffalo. I really don't. Uh, the Bills are having a tough time this year. Uh, they'll make the playoffs, but I don't expect them to go anywhere. But in this game, uh, Scott, I'll go with Kansas City by about 10 points. And you know what, Jeremy? I'll give you an opportunity to talk about the Lions and the Bears real quick. Who do you have? Well, I got the Lions. I think we saw the best out of the Bears when they played Detroit last time. And I don't think they haven't scored that many points since. And the the Lions were able to pull it off in record fashion in a way that's never been done before. And I don't think the Lions will have to do that against them. 
number one, they have somebody finally practicing against the defense that can emulate Justin Fields' game and Hendon Hooker. So okay. that gives them practice against a mobile quarterback. All right, Braylon, Dennis says Dallas will get him. Well, we'll see. Could be right. Okay, well, Jeremy, let me ask you one other question then. How do you think Bruce Irvin did in his debut? Oh, he did fantastic. Anybody that gets a, a sack, and I could care less, it didn't look like he tried to murder Derek Carr, like some people said, because <laughs> his body was to the side. He right. hit with his shoulder in his chest like you're supposed to. But when you're 250 pounds running at 20 plus miles per hour and you hit somebody, it's not easy to pull off. Okay, fair enough. Okay, George, give me the other prediction you had. You said Philadelphia and the Cowboys? Well, Philadelphia's got egg on his face, let's face it, after that performance against San Francisco. So they are definitely going to bounce back with a victory in that game. Um, the Lions, uh, well, again, the weather conditions, you know, the Lions – uh, playing a dome stadium, as we all know, and have for years and years. So when they get into these situations with the yucky weather or uh, turf conditions that may not be the same, you know, we all know what could happen. But the fact of the matter is, is they get much more talent than the Bears do. Come on, let's be honest here. The Lions will win, I'll say, by seven points. Okay, back to the chat room real quick before we go over to Damon. Okay, Eric Dalton, thanks for being back on. Anzalone he might be back, thumbs up sideways or whatever all right good thanks for bringing that out that's there. why right, i was damon. doing all this while he was... yeah, that's, that's <laughs> what you meant i noticed there that. you go all right damon uh as far as like kansas city and buffalo i gotta go with kansas city uh josh allen is a turnover machine uh that's something that kansas city definitely does not do a whole lot uh so yeah i look for them to have a big game uh, Lions and Bears, I read a clo uh, quote recently that uh, Jared Goff uh, plays really well uh, in bad weather. Um, so I picked the Lions over the Bears. And, and then the, uh, Cowboys and Eagles, I have to go with the Eagles. They they got they got something to prove this week. So, so who are you going in with that, Eagles? Mm -hmm. He said Eagles, yeah. yeah. Okay, I didn't hear that. Okay. Okay. Yeah. All right, let's go back to the chat room. Okay. Brian DeWitt wants to make a prediction. We're going to let you do it. He says 2720. Thank you very much. I'll be watching for this score. It seems like an intriguing one for me. All right. Well, all right, Ralph, that leaves you with these three games. Tonight. Okay. First, first, I'm taking Kansas City. I think they're a better overall team. Uh, you know, they have they have all their, uh, their eggs in one basket. So I think they're going to be okay with that. And then I'm going with Detroit and the Chicago game. I think Detroit's going to pull it out, but it's going to be a dog fight because of the weather. Okay. Uh, it's never easy to play in bad weather like that anyway. And also, uh, we'll see where the Bears go. Found out today that uh, uh, they're looking into Eric B. Enemy. So we'll see how that goes. All right. And then uh, uh, the final game, Philly and Dallas. That's always a dog fight, too. Uh, but I'm going to take Philly in this one. They need to rebound from last week. So we'll see how they do. Back to the chat room, Denzel Snipes, my colleague on Sideline Sports. He's firing off predictions, and I'm putting them out. Eagles, 34-31 walk-off field goal. Okay, that's possible. They always do play them yeah. tight. All right, let's see what he says in Detroit Lions, 27-10, to win number 10. Hope you're right. And just to give everybody a side note, I've been to Soldier Field, so I know what the wind does on Lake Michigan. All right, my predictions are as such, Kansas City, because as you guys mentioned, Josh Allen is a turnover machine. Secondly, I do believe the Eagles are going to rebound and beat the Cowboys. I think the Cowboys struggle against teams over 500, and the Eagles have been their nemesis. And last but not least, I'll give the Lions the win over Chicago. But like Ralph said, okay, it will be a dogfight at Soldier Field. I'll be curious to see what the weather conditions are going to be like. And, of course, Candy Ebling is ch chiming into the party, and she says NFC – North always plays each other tough. No doubt about it, Candy. All right. With that said, great job of you guys. Folks, just, you know, it's fire up. Thank My name you. is Scott Morgan Roth, Motor City Mad Mouth. Be, glad to be joined by Jeremy Bullrich, George Icorn. What, what are you covering your mouth up, Jeremy? Did you say uh, something? I started to laugh because Eric Dalton did another one there. It says Josh Allen, four passing touchdowns. Too bad two of them are to KC. <laughs> I like this guy. Eric Dalton. You know what? You tell your man Dalton. We got a spot for him here. Okay. Yep. Let that reach out to this guy. All right. We'll let him know. In the foreseeable future, Eric Dalton can take his candid comments and bring him on and talk to us. Okay. So let's go ahead before I get to my numbers. I actually like the chat room better anyway. So Josh Allen, we'll put it up there for those that are watching. 
here on YouTube. Josh Allen for passing TDs. <laughs> too, too bad two of them are the KZ. I love that, Eric. Good stuff. All right, back to Denzel. All right, Kansas City 35-31. Oh, home zones Allen at Arrowhead, but we're going to get another thriller. Denzel Snipes, by the way, I should point out, will be also on our crew for a professor and a pupil. That, so we'll probably start again. We have one more episode lined up. I believe it's going to be December 17th. The projected crew right now, and I'll have it all finalized, will be myself, Jacob Christner, Jeremy Balrick will be on that, and Denzel Snipes. So we'll have some updates as to when we do it, but that's the projected day that we're going to do it. Candy and I need a week off from the week that was up in Wisconsin, and we're definitely going to get it, but we'll be raring to go. And then after the first of the year, Jeremy will own Sundays with us. He'll be on Professor and the Pupil. And then this fire-up show with Candy Ebling as well. So we'll make sure that Sundays are taken care of. So with that said, let me get to my predictions before another chat comes in but i love it i told you the chat room is beautiful stuff buffalo bills is we mentioned that josh allen is a turnover machine i get the edge pat Mahomes. again i like the eagles and i also like the lions at soldier field well i got room for a few parting shots jeremy you have one you want to get off your chest i i love the fact that uh the lions went out when they found out aleem mcneil is going to miss three to four weeks with his injury that they picked up another former first-round pick. The Jaguars picked this guy 12 years ago in the top 10, Tyson Alalu. This kid yeah. looks like he, he's a, just a solid player. He's yes. played for Pittsburgh and Jaguars. I think he's been with one other team as well. But he's one of those NFL grinders. He's a, not a little bit more than a camp body like everybody thinks he is. Okay. Good point. George, you have one you want to get off your chest? Well, yeah, and I used it on the last show. I'm going to use it again. The baseball winter meetings are overhyped. Um, I mean, I know some, in, in, not if you're a Yankee fan, obviously, Boston fan, there was a couple of big trades and signings, of course, but uh, most of the other teams, it was real quiet. There wasn't much going on. And uh, I think the media just has to cool their jets a little bit on these winter meetings. They're just not like they used to be when there were so many trades so many free agent signings and a lot of stuff going on. This to me was one of the most boring winter meetings in Nashville I've ever seen. Yeah, I actually applied for a last year in Orlando. I didn't get approved. I didn't really care anyways. The Marlins sent it to me. And now that I hear it is what it is, I wouldn't apply anyways. My best days in the winter meetings were many years ago in Hollywood. And when I went down there and landed a job with Gastonia, and went a couple other times. It was good. Yeah, you Tom, did. Yeah. Yeah, so it worked out well for me. Damon, you have a parting shot? Anything you want to get off your chest? Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm excited for the Red Wings. Uh, they signed Patrick Kane. He made his debut tonight. Uh, had a couple of scoring chances. I, I, I can't wait to see what he could potentially bring to our team going forward. Okay, what about you, Ralph? Well, I want to talk about college football here. This uh, thing with Florida State getting budged out of the out of this, uh, you know, the, the, the upper echelon there or the playoff picture, the chain, whatever it is. And I got to tell you this, okay? I have a guy, the general manager of the radio station where I have my show, loves Michigan. And he and I had this argument because I'm trying to tell him that I don't care if Alabama loses 10 games, they're still going to be in a picture because that's the way the committee votes, okay? Yeah. This is, this is uh, the, one of the worst voting things that I ever saw in my life. How would you leave Florida State out of this when they have lost, no, when they lost no games at all? I don't get that. OK, right. and, and, and I'm, I'm furious about it. And I think it's a crime. And, you know, it's just th th that's my feelings for tonight. Well, yeah. bottom line, it's been a trending story all week anyways. But I guess like the majority of us believe, thankfully, there'll be 12. So we don't have this to talk about next year for sure. My, I, my parting shot is kudos to Jim Leland making it to the baseball. Yes. Game. I really Amen. am. I really, yeah. Yes. You know, I mean, Lou Pinella missed by one vote. He'll get in next time, although it's too bad when you miss by one vote. He didn't get in. Lou Pinella, hopefully he does. But Jim Leland, I, go ahead, Jeremy. Um, I did my reaction the other night when we talked about it on Inside the Pigskin with the FSU thing. And you know what? I used my head instead of my heart. My heart says, oh, my God, these kids, they went 12-0. and 0. But, you know, they were on their third th string quarterback. And right. if you look at that team <clears throat> and you say, okay, these are the five teams, which team is going to lose to all four of them? Everybody would say Florida State. 
And you know what? You're right. Because you know what? Yeah. When I was reading up on it again today, Jeremy, that's exactly how they bait the college football playoff committee. What, what was it? Travis Knight, I think he was, right? Uh, yeah. George, uh, yeah, yeah tra- Jordan Travis, right? I'm sorry. Well, I, Travis, whatever. Okay. Yeah, Jordan Travis. Jordan Travis. And I, and I think that that was the thing that swung everybody's vote about why they didn't get in. Because let's face the reality, they don't want these games to be bad anyways. And again, I also talked about big markets as well, where you have Dallas in there, you have Seattle in there. And of course, you have Alabama's name and, and Metro Detroit. And now again, Florida State 13. I saw him play against Miami, and this Jordan Travis is phenomenal, this kid. He really is. And as Brent DeWitt said, and he's right, of course, they did get this chef. We all know that. Yeah. I mean, but again, it had to do with exactly what I said. The right. college football playoff committee said, okay, out of these five teams, which one has no shot at winning with their current roster? Right. That's that's what it comes down to because that was actually in the college football board's s- scheme of things. They right. said the undefeated team is not always going to make it. Yeah, and you know what? You're right. You you really are. But Jeremy, that, I read the same thing that you did, Okay. The bottom line is they didn't think Florida State had a chance to compete with any of these four. But the one thing I also mentioned the other night on Inside the Pigskin, how can you put Alabama in and leave Texas out when Texas beat Alabama? Yes. Right. You can't. Yes. That's why That's... if you're going to put Alabama in, that means Texas had to be above them. They, well, and they yeah. got that right. Yeah, they did. Of course, Washington was a no-brainer. I mean, come on. They right, played yeah. really well. Uh, Pac-12 and yeah, Michigan. So I actually think they got it right. I feel bad for Florida State. But again, you're going to have 12 next year, and nobody's going to care about 13, whoever gets left out. It doesn't matter. <laughs> That's I right. Yeah. Think that if they were going yeah. to do it, they should go 60 like they do at the level below, I think, FCS. But I'll take 12 over the current system all day long. I, I really will. I actually sent an email to the, the college football playoff board for the 12 team, an idea that I had. Your top power, because there's only power four next year, there is no power five. Right. Because, you know, you got the pack too. That's not a power conference anymore. Right. Right. So you take your four big conference winners. Then you do four at large bids from the power five conferences outside of that. And then your four mid major conference winners that the best record. That way, these smaller schools get a chance to be in this. And you won't have that question about Coastal Carolina, FAU, Liberty. USF. James Madison. Oh, yeah. James, I was gonna say Madison. James Madison yeah. had a pretty good year, too. Right. Yes. Right. Well, I'm just saying, you won't have that question idea, about those Jeremy. small schools. Yeah, yeah, no, Jeremy, you're on point with everything you're saying I'm about nice the whole idea, thing. You really are. But the reality of the situation is going to have 12, and we're not going to have a discussion. And I do believe they, the Final Four is right. I really do believe that. I didn't think Florida State had a chance without Jordan Travis to be able to be competitive. It, and, but, but you know what? You know who ends up making out like a bandit in this whole thing that we didn't realize? How about the Orange Bowl? And you know why? Yeah. You got Georgia, okay, against Florida State in in Miami. Yeah, that's gonna be a that's gonna be one heck of a game too. Yeah, I mean, Orange yeah. Bowl is looking like, but hey, you, you know what? We'll be more than happy to take these guys. <laughs> Absolutely. You got against Athens. I'll tell you what, Aaron Hard Rock Stadium. No, nobody's complaining about that matchup. I think it'll be pretty well. All right, I'll put one more up with Eric Dalton before we close her out tonight. Okay, Jeremy, exclude Neuter Lane. I like this guy until they join a power conference. Oh, I'll tell you. I know he's one of your cronies if he's he's making these kind of names. My my nickname for him is Notre Shame. Yeah, all right. Well, that's because Notre they get Shame. overrated every yeah. at the beginning of every year. And we get ratings for uh players like that, so it's all good. But no, it's pretty interesting. So Damon Knight, uh good for a stack pack. He really did a nice job tonight. Hey Scott, Lance, Lance from Pensacola said he can't wait till tomorrow morning for you. Oh yeah. Oh, you yeah. tell Lance from Pensacola, I, I really, I, I'd like to see you get him on a guest. In fact, I encourage you to get, try to get him out here and come on this platform. We can all see who, who I'm calling an external bum all day long. Uh, you guys don't know about this guy here, but I, oh. I, I, I make this guy, you know, I'm not, not trying he to does. brag a little bit. Huh? Scott does it. He, he puts it right on the point, man, with Lance. Just yeah, like... this guy's a trip. Hey, I love it. I, everybody needs a pinata. I got Lance yeah. on the external bump podcast, man. Although Mark Mancini tends to be a pinata when I need to get a little steam out there. All right, all right, Dalton, you're making it too hard for me to stop the show, so I won't. All right, let's get this one up. George Will is band members playing each other. The stars are dropping out. Well, you know what? That's an interesting point, too, because you know what? You know, when you talk about the transfer portal playing Lawrence wow. Pro. That, 
Yeah. And when you talk about not qualifying, a lot of guys may bypass the bowl games in the yep, effort to will. try to get a jump start. Yeah. So you know what, yep. Eric Dalton, you saved your best, your last chat as your best, or as Vanessa Williams would say yeah. with that, save the best how, for last. How about that for a parting shot? And since he just said that, 1,153 players this year have hit the transfer portal when it was 742 by spring ball last year was wow. the total that transferred. If you think about that, that means we could have double that by the time spring ball rolls around. Yeah. Okay. yeah. And anybody that enters the transfer portal, guess what also that means? They're not going to the draft. Right. Well, yeah, well, it's all all I can say, the only thing I can say, Jeremy, is if they're not, you know where they're going to next? They're going to the XFL, the USFL, or they're going to Canada. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's right. Well, there's one guy I'm kind of sad about because he would have been available at that late first, early second round around that point that our cardiac cats up here in Detroit could have had. And that's that princely Umalele. This kid has got a bend like no other. He reminds me of a young Bruce Irvin or uh, in recent history, James Houston. Okay, very good. Well, on that note, we're, we're going to call it a night. So uh, just so you know, folks, this is Fire Up. My name is Scott Morgan. Ralph, please be joined by Jeremy Baller, George Eichhorn, Damon Knight, Ralph Williams. All right, Jeremy, let everyone know how they get a hold of you. Well, you can always find me here on the South Florida Tribune channel on YouTube, where I will be on this show, whatever show, and the football show, and on Tuesdays, Thursdays, Sundays, any day. You can also find me on my channel on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays with the kneecap biting with the Motor City Lions. And you can find my writings on the South Florida Tribune.com under the Motor City Tribune heading underneath the names like Scott Morgan Roth and George Eichhorn here. These guys are great. You know, those two. Uh, right. Okay. Well, I appreciate the kind words. Okay. Oh, George, yeah. Thank ahead. you. Thank you, Jeremy. Yeah. You'll find me where you also find Jeremy and Scott, <laughs> great writers, Jacob Christner once in a while at the South Florida Tribune, Motor City Tribune. Also, I write for the Detroit Monitor locally. I have a book out called Detroit Sports Broadcasters on the Air. And there is a link at the end of my column uh, to uh, purchase the book or review the book, whatever you'd like to do. You can see me on 108 Stitches inside the pigskin, the sports exchange. Uh, just great lineup of shows, obviously, Pundits, Pundit, and uh, this wonderful fire up. So great being on this show. Reach me at gicorn at yahoo.com. That's the easiest way to get a hold of me. All right, Damon, sit still and I'll let you get your parting shot in. Okay, go ahead. Yeah, uh, so you can follow me at uh, Facebook, Damon Knight, uh, South Florida Tribune, as well as a correspondent, uh, you know, and other sites as well. Social media. Okay. Go ahead, Ralph. Yeah, you can find me on Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter X platform. I have my own YouTube channel. I also uh, can be heard on Block Talk Radio. I have two shows there. And I also have my own radio show on Beaver County Radio here in the western Pennsylvania area every Tuesday, 5 to 6 p.m. on Beaver County Radio's Facebook page, YouTube channel, and 99.3 FM, 12.30 a.m. All right, very good. One last time here in case you're joining us, just so you know that Fire Up is being broadcast around the world. The audio version of Fire Up can be heard on iHeartRadio, Apple, Spotify, Google, wherever you get your podcast. Please hit the red subscribe button on YouTube, South Florida Tribune. We're striving for more subscribers. Please also comment, like, and share the broadcast. Want to be a guest? No problem. All you need to do is participate in the chat room like a lot of people did. Eric Dalton, what are you waiting for? Let's get you on here, okay? So, send topic ideas to South Florida Tribune at gmail.com. If you want to advertise, talk efficiently, give me a call at 954-304-4941. We broadcast live on Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, and YouTube. Our website, www.southfloridatribune.com. Candy Ambling does an awesome job on it. Twitter slash X at Tribune South. Candy Ambling is behind the scenes. I book, as you can see in the corner of our screen with George, it is called Lessons from the Microphone, Tuning into the Enduring Wisdom at Visionary Leaders. To give you an overview, okay, it talks about old school versus new school media, and you can find it on Kindle as well as Amazon. So with that said, that concludes this edition of Fire Up. So on behalf of my crew, we want to thank you very much for joining us. Candy, I believe, will probably be in the late Thursday night seat next week. But obviously, you know, we just came back from Wisconsin. Wanted to give her a chance to take a break, work on the website. And it's great to be on with these guys. I come out when the time situation presents itself. Been a really good show tonight. Really enjoyed doing it. So good night, everybody. Have yourself a great weekend. And we will catch you the next time.